So I'll show you one of the projects I've done the past year or so. So, automatic extractor fan controller. So this is in my mother home, which is here, which I built myself. Um, is everything um, I built with this. So it was a bus when we got it, or coach, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so this thing here is a uh, factory extractor fan on the roof. Just there, it's factory fitted, and um, that um, when it gets hot in here in the summer, I've got an automatic control. So I've got a switch over here. Flick that on, and there's a display comes up, and I've got um, also got battery monitor here, solar charge controller here. Anyway, so this is the unit here starting up. So, you can see a little blue LED which is built. I've got a Arduino logic board on the back here. Um, I want to see the displays, and this is, allows me to set the temperature I want. The little indicator comes on um, when the fan comes on. And it goes off again now. You can actually hear the fan probably. Right, so, basically, what I can do, I can leave the set turned on. I can set the temperature I want like, during the summer so it doesn't get too hot in here. And um, you know, I'll get it so you know, 40 degrees or whatever. So I've got a set range of was it 14 up to 49, all right? So that's the range I can set. So once it goes above that, it will turn on. And it got a little bit of um, hysteresis, hysteresis there to allow for that as well. Just a little bit of a, um, a tolerance window. Um, I think it's about a degree or something like that, so I wouldn't fluctuate. Um, just here's the actual temperature sensor. I've actually got it sticking through the board. Can I get the focus on it now? Come on. Because it's reflective, it doesn't want to focus, of course. Anyway, there's a the sensor there. So, a little TMP, I think it's a 37 or something, I think that's right. TMP 37. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what I use for that. So, I'm actually going to, not right now, but I will eventually take this panel off and. Um, show you the actual control it's a little bit messy because it's all just behind a panel it's, it's actually hot glued onto here i think because i don't know you can just see the pads there we've actually stuck it down yes yeah, so i will actually pull it off and show you the back of it and and um, i actually i've got the program on the computer so i'll actually go through that as well and show you the software which runs it i mean it's a very simple thing really but um i could have probably built uh bought, purchased something that would do the job but um this is interface with my main board here so over here i've actually got a manual fan control um, so if I turn it on, the fan will come on manually, regardless. Um, if on the tool time, I'm just leave that turned on, and um, it will just come on as required. So I can actually set it so the temperature in here doesn't get too hot in summer. That's the main reason for it because it gets pretty hot in here. I've got um, what have I got on the roof here? 700 watts of solar power. <laughs> yeah, 700 watts. I've got on the roof of this thing. So um, we actually got uh, mains power and stuff in here and um, got an 1800 watt inverter and we run like a laser printer and that sort of stuff in here. We use it as an office when we go away on weekends to, to events. So um, yeah, just a little control panel with various lights and stuff like this. Is, some angled lights which are down the index of the bed there and I've got another one just over here. Just above the table so when you're eating you can actually just have that little light on. It's just nice lighting up. Um, Obviously, fridge, which is just down here, just there. So, everything's electric, but don't use any gas. Everything's electric powered. I've also got uh, ball band Wi Fi in here. Um, just over here, there's a Wi Fi unit that's down there. Um, well, ball band unit just there, sorry, modem. And um, there's the high powered Wi Fi unit. That's got Wi Fi built into it as well. Um, ignore the airport unit for now. That's what we actually use most of the time. We use it sometimes. Um, so, we've got that unit there, which does the main ball band. And then we've got the Wi Fi high powered there. This has got Wi Fi in it too. And we actually run a couple of networks one for a private network for us to use, which is high powered, and a, um, a weaker free Wi Fi network for people to use at the events. So, uh, yeah, anyway, it's just that's what it's off. So that's what it does, it just keeps the temperature down in here a little bit so um, you know, things don't get too hot. I don't like it getting too hot in here, it's not good for it, but uh, what are we doing? I've, I built this 
vehicle myself basically inside with the cabinetry and that's toilet cubicle there so um heaps of gadgetry you know all the solar system and everything on the roof and whatever so actually i might show you that but um yeah that's what i'll do next is i'll pull this off and show you the back and then eventually i'll go through the software right so you can see the solar panels up on the roof there um there's the bus and uh, a couple of small panels there but four panels there and two pairs there and there um, i might get a different views if i'm showing the top but uh, I did these other second ones on later on. We did have 540 watts, I think it was, or 560. Maybe these other ones on the kit and rounds up to 700. Nice round number, so I'll stop there. Okay, I'm going to pull this panel off. I thought I'd show you that part. The way I built things, it's a little, uh, a few screws. So these little plastic panels are actually a bit out of a sheet. So I cut all that up and mounted everything into these panels to keep them all consistent so it'll look nice and, you know, and, and uh, it matches. Let's do it I moved the um, the table out because it's actually a movable table. It's actually on a, like a, a panel which can rotate around and slide around and stuff. And so I just moved it out a little bit so I can put the tripod on it to get a better view for the camera. So this is all the air ducting here. It's got air conditioning in the front, in the ceiling, and it's blown through these ducts. So what I've actually done is I've used this duct as a conduit. So all my cabling is going through this duct. Well, anything that goes from this panel to the rear. Because I've got a whole bunch of my control gear and stuff underneath the bed there at the back. So, um, these are connections, nice and simple. So we've got uh, a power feed in here, um, which runs from the automatic fan control switch. And then there's an output here. Um, there's a little relay ball just there. Hopefully you can see this. Turn over a lot and give it some more light. Alright, so get you closer. So there's a little power supply. That drops 24 volts down to 12 volts or 5 volts maybe even. I think it might be 5 volts. Yeah, I think it's 5 volts set. Um, and that runs this little Arduino Leo stick from Futronics. Great little piece of gear. The reason I use this one is that as you can see I've got it stuck down. And if I need to reprogram it, I can just plug a USB cable on into the computer. Done. Um, in fact, it actually sticks out far enough. If I just took this panel out, which is this plug here, and there's a little joiner here, which I can disconnect, I can actually go and take it to um, the computer and actually plug it straight in front of my computer without using a cable. Um, it's not great, though, because it a bit of stress on it, but I can do it that way. Um, I've still got it turned on. It's just come on. So, obviously, there's the back end of the... Serial control display again, another hand little device. This is a spark fun, spark fun LCD display. So it's got the serial, it's got an Arduino on the back of it basically. Um, and that sits on the back of it. Um, the Arduino is also controlling the display for the serial interface. It's got this analog interface from the pot on the front here, which has got a trimmer there to adjust the range. And um, there's a little bulb which has got a relay on it, so that controls the output. So it switches that relay on and off, and that relay is basically across the switch on the back of that other panel on the manual control switch. So you see, it's only got four wire interface. You know, power and and switching goes across that other switch there. So that's you know fairly straightforward thing. You know, obviously power, output control, controller, display, nice and simple. And you see, I've done it fairly tidily. I probably could have done it better, but. And just down here is the wires which run down to the sensor. So that's, just, that's the uh, sensor there. So I did this drill a hole through, pop the sensor through the hole, and then hot glue it at the back. The reason I put it through is I just mount it on the back because like, it's, it's, this isn't a, um, an air conditioning duct. So when the vehicle's running, um, you get cold air going through there. right? Equally, when he's got hot sun on the outside, you get some heat transfer through the outside for the body into this ducting. So this ducting gets warmer, um, which gives you a false reading. So I poke that sensor through to try and get the internal temperature of the vehicle rather than the, duct, the, the ducting temperature. Um, so yeah, that's the unit. It's pretty simple really, you know. Um, you can see how I've done that basically. I've got some uh, resistor bridges on here. Uh, there's a divider network. Those are the loading I've put on. No, well you can see that. I'll turn it upside down. 
bit loading and there's a bit of smoothing here, capacitor and stuff like that. Okay. I was getting some um, electrical noise in the system, so it was actually uh, EMI interference. So if I had the Wi-Fi running or the power inverter running in the back, um, the readings would go a bit erratic. So I had to play around with this a little bit and put some filtering on, so it's going from the power supply to the, and the ground to the actual sensor connections. And the sensor does require a bit of loading on it anyway, otherwise it can give false readings. There's a bit of information about that online where the sensor um, output won't be right unless you put a, sl a small load on it first, um, just, to, just to ballast it down slightly. Um, so some of that's the ballast thing, and the rest of it is actually me trying to smooth it out to get rid of the electrical noise from the system, um, which actually worked, you know, so I've got smooth smoothing on the power supply there, um, and just those ceramics there to help get rid of any um, RF interference and that sort of thing. Because so I do have Wi-Fi in here, a ball band, and that was probably getting into it. Because the antennas are on the roof behind where the camera is right now. All right, so that's the unit. Um, and I'll go and show you the software at some point. I probably won't do it right now. I've got some things I need to do. I thought I'll just do this while I'm thinking about it and um, show you that. But yeah, it's just uh, fairly simple. I mean, you can't buy controllers these days. You know, it's fairly cheaply probably cheaper than what I made this for um, but so I wanted to actually have my own controller which I you know I knew how it worked and it's all you know, so, you know did what I wanted and I set the slabs I wanted so it's got a um, it does the job quite nicely so obviously I'm happy with it um, that's one of the various things I've got stuffed in here I've got all kinds of things in here um, yeah, I've got stuff on the front there, I've got a tire pressure monitor system and that sort of thing in here, so if you get a, a puncture or a low pressure tire, then um, it warns you, or overheating or something like that. So, very really important, especially on something like this, which is quite big and you don't really feel it. In a car, if you get a puncture, you might, you might be able to feel it if you're lucky, you start feeling a bit loose. On this thing here, well, maybe not. This is one of the back wheels where you've got jaws. So, uh, let's uh, move this down now. Sorry, some other stuff. So, zoom back out. Um, this is the other thing I've got in here strip light controller. So, I've got um, LED strip lights five meters long down each side of the vehicle. Um, and I can got suitable colors. I, I was pre programmed it with some colors um, because they're RGB ones, obviously. And um, that allows me to, I, I think I've got pink, purple, green, amber. Um, and white are the colors on here and on here I've got the switching so this is actually just like an, a light so these when, it, when it, any of these are selected it's just white light instead of colored so I can actually use those as exterior lighting and there's a controller here for my diesel heater um, which is powered up but it doesn't really need to be now because it's summer which is located just down there you probably can't even see it no I can't even see it so We've got a whole bunch of electronics and stuff down the back there. But all these windows are tinted. I did that myself as well when I first got the vehicle. Um, all the windows tinted, obviously, apart from the very windscreen one. You can see a difference in colour there. But uh, in the front, I've got various bits of gadgetry and stuff. So I've got the. You never have enough cigarette light or socket, so I've got four there, and it's still not enough. I've already filled them all. <laughs> so it's always fun. Um, and uh, there's my TPMS over there and reversing camera which actually runs all the time, I've got it on all the time and uh, dash cam right there so that records everything, I've got one in the back as well just about every time we go out in, in this vehicle we get idiots doing stupid things in front of us um, it seems to be a trait when people see a big vehicle they do see stupid stuff <laughs> get way more in this vehicle than do in a car um, I think it was about 8 incidents in one weekend we, once when we went away, it was ridiculous so I always have the dash cam, you, that's where the footage comes from on my other sections of the channel. So that's one of the cameras I use. Okay, so I think that'll do for now. And I will, uh, oh yes, I guess I have on here. I've got, um, obviously I've got an alarm system built in as well. I've got a built-in alarm system using Arduino, which runs, it does central locking and all sorts of stuff like that. So, uh, and you can just set a dash cam in the back window at the top too. I'll zoom into that. There you go, just there, sitting in the back. So a black view one, 
it does really good nice video quality really good lens on it and everything because really nice good good quality video and it's really nice but um audio is appalling <laughs> so it's just yeah anyway never mind